And now, Wolf Bites open mic. The Bass Jackers. I just came home actually from tour. Hey guys, this is Phoenix Paul. Hey, what's up? This is Sean Frank. Wolf Bites DJs and your favorite artists. Sophie Francis. Sophie, thanks for joining us today. Hi, it's super nice to join you guys. What's up, guys? This is Ahmed Van Buren. Now, open mic. Hey guys, it's DJ Flame on Wolf Bites Radio. Thank you guys for tuning in on this open mic podcast. And today, we have one of my favorites, Hurries, today. How are you guys? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Doing good, man. I got another uh, show tonight. I'm feeling good. Yeah. Uh, about to eat some Terry Blacks. Um, nice. So, no, no one knows what that is. Sorry. Sorry. It's a barbecue place. My bad. Yeah. I don't know. I'm like, I thought I'm, I'm like, is it? I don't yeah. Know. It's a barbecue place. My bad. My bad. It's a really well known Texas barbecue place. Also, here, I'm only doing this virtual background just for shits and giggles, but hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Because, uh, I'm I'm literally sitting in what feels like an interrogation room, and I'm just like, yeah, we're not gonna let the vibe be like that. So it makes me feel any better. I'm like, I'm literally in a closet, like our film closet. So I mean, it looks at least better than than a blank wall with a light that's hanging over me that makes me feel like somebody's gonna go, where were you on the night of December? I know because just in here, it just makes me feel like I'm like in like in jail or some kind of like you know little confession room. I'm like, I'm innocent, but yeah, I don't. I know exactly how you feel. Oh, good. Got, All right. Yeah, you tell me. Little logo there, so. Hey, I mean, it looks good. Can't go wrong. Yep. So how's your tour going? Tour's going good, man. Um, the shows have been insanely good. I mean, the crowds are into it. Um, I'm obviously into it. And I think the more we move out, like, on this tour, obviously, the more comfortable we are and the more um like just the more loose and easy the shows get so everything just keeps getting better and better and the fans are just super super chill and it's great meeting everyone after the show I do meet and greet um and so I'm out there for like maybe an hour and a half two hours every night just meeting everyone I can um you know and yeah it's 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 been a great journey so far it's crazy that we're coming up on show eight now it feels like feels like time has passed so quickly yeah, I bet so when you're always traveling like that. Do you now when you're on tours, do you still like make some new music while you're on tours too? Or oh yeah. Oh yeah. I feel like there's a lot of inspiration that comes from it. Um, especially, you know, being at home and then going to a session is one thing and you can come up with a bunch of ideas. But then again, also like talking to people, people give you ideas and and stuff like that and you just go oh shit i need to uh, or i'll say oh shoot sorry yeah, i got a sense uh, of good. <laughs> all good all good um but they got they got things and stories to share and it gives me an idea and go to go oh that hasn't been written about yet or i haven't written about that what's my version of this so yeah 100 percent. gotcha well, that's really good yeah i heard about your tour and i thought like that's really awesome i always it's like that's one thing when if I do become a musician or ever think about it's like how's tours going to be I know like you have to be away from home for a while and it's like yeah, yeah but I fully I fully thrive on it like uh there's a lot of people that get tired I don't get tired I've literally been touring consistently for a year now um and and I don't want to stop I really don't I I love being home don't get me wrong I love being home love seeing my family I have a dog um and she usually travels with me uh but she's not on this one um and uh and I, I just find myself so easily i have so much fun i feel more positive when i'm just like moving around so you know it, i guess it's different for everyone yeah i understand that so i think i know everyone's different like some people's more towards at home but then at the same time when they're like out and about with their fans and their crowds they're you like okay this is basically like my second family right there you know you're yeah. out there and it's like you don't even get homesick a lot. So it's like they're, they're welcome into your, or they're welcome to you into their home, if that makes sense, you know, oh, like yeah. whatever city they're in. Oh yeah. That. And then on top of it, like the crew that we're with um, right now are, are amazing. Not only are they professional, but they're like super sweet people. Um, and so like just joking around with them and, and, you know, it, it really feels like it does really feel like another family away from, the family and and it happens just because you guys are constantly with each other for you know a month um and so you know you kind of get attached really quickly yeah that's a lot so yeah. you said you've been for a few tours what's the craziest thing that you have ever occurred to a tour so far oh man i 
I got stories. I don't know what, how PG you want me to keep it, uh, but I'll, I'll stay relatively PG. I mean, uh, we got mainly college listening, so, I mean, you can keep it PG, PG-13, you know. All right, yeah. I mean, signing in different places, as I'm sure you can understand. Okay, yeah. Um, uh, we had a really funny one. I mean, like, I, I've got really funny wild ones, uh, you know, but I feel like one of the funnier ones that happened to me is I was doing a meet and greet a couple of days ago uh, in uh, in Salt Lake City, and we had to move it outside of the venue. And as I was walking, I tripped over a rock. Oh. And like, I wasn't like a major trip. It was just like a little slip. Okay. And then I continued walking and the line is following me. Um, and so after like an hour of doing this meet and greet, someone at the end of somebody who was at the end of the line ends up coming at the front and goes, Hey, um, I didn't have, I didn't have something to sign. So I took the rock that you tripped on. Can you sign it for me? I was like, I mean, I completely forgot that happened. Absolutely. I'm going to do that. So, I mean, like, there's just like funny things like that, that have happened. Um, but uh, funny enough, that also was probably the craziest show that I had played, played in my life. Uh, the crowd was hectic and I loved it. They were on one on one i mean I, I could say nothing and they would still cheer it's weird that's like most crowds i, I know i talked to uh i had an open mic in the past one of theirs they went to europe i believe and they said that there was like people crawling all over up on top of like believe it or not traffic poles just for them and stuff it was like really crazy and i'm like that's a little safety concern but at the same time i know they're having fun but i'm like yeah, fun fun within limits of not hurting yourself is probably the better option of things. But, you know, let people live, I guess. I mean, I understand. It's like a concert and everything. It's the time of their life. They got to, you know, do everything. Yeah. I mean. If they're having fun, they're having fun. I'm, I'm not going to stop them as long as they don't. If they're going to hurt anyone, maybe just let them hurt themselves, not other people. Yeah. Because that's just like a decision on their own. But also don't hurt yourself because don't hurt yourself. <laughs> yeah. Trust me. I'm I'm a clumsy person. Yeah, this past summer, I hurt myself by accident. I Similar story, but it wasn't a rock. It was sandals in a concrete floor. I slipped and busted my knee, my right oh, knee, and cracked my kneecap. So that wasn't... No. Oh, my yeah. God. Did you have surgery, or did that heal? No like surgery. That? Luckily, it wasn't separated. It was just a little crack below the okay. kneecap. So that was my main concern is, like, I mean, out of, I'm glad it happened during the summer, not while I'm here at school, because that would yeah. be pretty bad. But, I mean... My sister just had to have knee surgery. We did it during the summer, so she's, like... She's pretty much almost fully recovered, um, but like I can't imagine her like doing her next or when she's a sophomore now, um, doing her sophomore year, uh, like on a crutch. Like shit, that sucks. Yeah, because I was I was on a crutch too, and I'm like, like crutches first week. I'm like, I can walk without crutch. They just gave me like this huge like leg brace, and they said just use crutches as needed. So I'm like, okay, I just basically didn't use crutches at all. But yeah. yeah. It was interesting, but then, yeah, when we just talk about your rock story, I'm like, mm, reminds me of just walking and just slipping. And bust. Yeah. <laughs> the funny thing is, I didn't know my knee was broken because after I fell, I'm just, well, I was like literally just walking like normal. I'm like, something doesn't feel right. I'm, I'm just going to sleep it off. Next morning I woke up, I'm like, yeah, this ain't and right. you can't even move your leg. I've had that yeah. exactly happen to me. So I get it. Trust me, I get it. Um, Yeah, I don't know. Just funny things that have happened on tour the other thing is like yesterday the guys played a prank on me um so there's an led screen behind me um and they were putting messages up on the board and and literally what they did is they said like right after the first song like right before it ended they go boo do do like say boo when he when he finishes the song so like i didn't even notice um and so after the first song ends, I started taking off my earpiece and all of a sudden I'm hearing people go, boo, boo. And I was like, oh my God, did I, like, did I do that bad? Oh my God. And then I, I turn around and I see them saying, JK, now you guys can cheer. <laughs> I'm like, all right, ha, 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 you know? So it's things like that. It, tour, tour life's been pretty fun, I will say. You know, if I was in charge of concerts in the big LED screen in the back, I would do so much to the artist just to mess oh, yeah. with them. I mean, I seen I seen a lot online rather people just like put random messages or it's yeah or just crazy pictures in the background. It's hilarious. I'm like, that's probably like not only that, it just gets like 
a laugh for the artist too and then the audience just and like, like yeah. it makes the show more enjoyable it's fun like that you know yeah so i've been recently to your recent release x my mind yeah i listened to it and it's it i really enjoying it so it's like what type of music do you plan like what mood do you plan because in my because when i hear that it's like a little bit not really lo-fi but it has that you know that little beat to it you know the, the little guitar thing in the beginning yeah the sure. guitar to be honest i think that one was just kind of a one-off for me I, that song sat in my vault for maybe five or six years um it, it just kind of has like you know the like the gnarles barkley song crazy yeah so to me like it kind of has like an echo of that that kind of vibe and there's nothing else in my repertoire that's kind of similar to it. So I'm not planning to make more stuff like that. It just ended up working really well with my set and with my song list. And so, you know, like I like having different things. And so let that be and live as its own different thing. I have another song coming out in, in a little less than a month now, I think three weeks that, um, that's really more in the direction of where I'm going, which is I still have synths and, and you know, uh, kind of backing instruments, but really having these guitars and drums that are kind of more analog and, and acoustic kind of be present because I feel like that's where mu music is kind of moving towards. Yeah. Um, in the next few years, I think that the element of something real is very, um, very capturing, you know, and it won't take away from my ability to do um songs that are uh a little more electronic based uh but it's just not where i find myself anymore so kind of moving towards like a, almost a combination of of cross my mind um and uh like kind of like breakup season if you took a listen to that too um like that's kind of my where my worlds are starting to melt and i'm really finding that that pocket yeah i think like most artists today, you just listen to like compared to 2017 and as they go on, you can tell that there's like a major vibe change in oh, yeah. the majority of EDM music. And it's like, I mean, I understand everything is changing and it's like, yeah. it's like more, not only the instrument, but like the lyrics too on most of these words or their songs. It's just like, I think things are getting stronger than where they were. Cause I think before people were really focused on the groove and the beat element of songs now i think it's coming back around to focus on the real details besides just the beat and the and the uh and like the groove you know it's now it's like can we have all of it together which is where i think it should be right you know we're not just here to make something that you listen to for five minutes and then forget about like i want to make something that's like meaningful um to stick with you you know when you're 20 years old or you're 15 years old, you hear it for the first time, it means something to you. And then all of a sudden you're 30, you listen back to that song again. And it, all of a sudden the same exact song has a different meaning to you because it has that longevity. So that's what I think we're all moving towards. Yeah. Cause especially across my mind, like one of the verses that says when I'm getting drunk, when I talk about love, no, you don't cross my mind. You don't cross my mind. You're like, wow, that's actually very impactful for some people too. Especially that, I guess those that got out of the relationship as well. Right. So and here's the thing is like that for me was like, it's fully like a realization because there's a lot of love songs, a lot of breakup songs. And really that, that song um, is not really, about like saying screw you i don't think about you anymore what it is is it's a personal realization that i think people go through when they've been left or when they had to break up or whatever um that what are the time like i sat down i remember thinking and i was like what are the times that you think about a person when you get drunk when you go to sleep or wake up or when someone is talking about their relationship like that's the times that you're really thinking about what you have gone through right so it's really just a realization about, oh my God, I actually internally have moved on for real. You know, that, that for me is, is where that song lives. Yeah. I can, cause I can tell what you mean by that song. There's a lot of songs like that, but back to like the, where you say like how the lyrics impact most of these songs today, I believe, cause I know when I was 
I guess when I was a lot younger, starting listening to EDM more, it was more of the like the melody and stuff to it. Yeah, exactly. Now it's just like to lyrics today. I'm like, I listen to more of the lyrics. I'm like, wow. Like one last year that was very hit to me a lot was one by the Chainsmokers by iPad. Isn't it strange we're strangers again? I don't know if you heard that song. No, I didn't, but that's a cool lyric. But is isn't it strange how we're strangers again? I'm like, as soon as like, especially when I hear here at college, you're like. That is actually true because most of the friends that you were friend back in high school, it just gets you back into the mood. Like most of these songs, like some of yours too, you just sit there and like, it just brings you back. And yeah. Like, wow, this is exactly how I'm feeling. It's so cool. And a coincidence yeah. that a song that just came out is matching my feelings. So I think you also do a pretty good job with that as well. Yeah. You tell me that that was a really good question. I, I appreciate that. Seriously. Of course, yeah, because I just I heard that song and I'm like, I'm like, I know there's a meaning behind it, but I know e every artist has like something different. Yeah, but that one, that one definitely was a very close to home hitting for me. I have done songs that aren't necessarily about me; they're about other people. I just like writing about experiences. Period. Right. Um, but that one was fully um, something that I had to go through in order to actually write that so see i think that's what the majority of like the books good songs today people like take some from their past or something and they're like it needs to be there i know there's a lot of stuff in the moments like wow this should be like a song and i understand that's how like most of them makes makes pretty good song popular hit song because it actually happened and some people may go through something similar to that situation and it just makes them yeah. feel the exact same thing that's that's one of the major things i love about music today and EDM songs today. Yeah. There the EDM songs honestly have developed quite a bit. Um there's that new uh Sasha Sloan song she did with uh who was it? My god, I'm drawing a blank, but extremely good as well. Um yeah, just I think music's really starting to take a turn for the for the better there's still the ones that kind of poke out you know uh that i'm just like i i mean I, with all due respect you know uh that kind of poke out that are like not my favorite um i feel like they're just kind of again here for like five minutes but um we're really we're really moving towards like something being a little bit more um deep long long lasting you know? yeah i completely understand that and it's just when like more every new song that comes out i know when new songs come out here we always listen to them i'm like these songs are just like getting deeper and deeper and i think that's what like fans crave too and i'm like this is this is awesome right oh it's hero hero yeah, it's uh alan walker that she did it with alan walker yeah, we, we uh, yeah we do play that one on wolf Ice. i believe we do yeah that's one of the new tracks we play it's super cool Alan Walker and yeah, most of them. It's like most of the collaborations are like. There was one collaboration. It was, Elenium and someone else. But any Elenium, any Elenium, is golden. My favorite one that is that they've done is with John Bellion. Yes, good things fall apart. That to me, first off, John is an amazing, amazing writer. Um, there's nothing that I think he's put out that I've, that I've ever been like, oh, I would have changed this lyric, you know, not at all. And on top of that, he, I believe him when he sings the words, I think that the track is beautifully built. Just great. Anything by Lenium in general is great. I, I have nothing bad to say about them. I'm the same way. That's like one of my second favorite artists is Alinium right there. And it's ironic you brought that up literally because I was on a mountain trip last week. Me and my friend was just going down the road listening he's like we're gonna play a good bop song and that's the song he pulled up and i'm like just going down the road and you can just actually just feel like you're actually in the song yeah so, but yeah most of alinium i happen. love alinium's collaborations with artists like you just said that those usually when those like the popular artists you know that something's gonna go really oh, yeah. well oh yeah you cannot go wrong with alinium at all in my opinion 100 percent so it looks like that. So when you began your music career, you were in high school and you started doing open mic nights. Yeah. So um, I 
I started kind of going around my city and just kind of putting myself out there because I knew that, you know, as good as I think I am, right, everybody thinks they're amazing. The only truth of, and knowing how good you are is practice and, and see how things work. So I did a bunch of open mics in coffee shops in there was this thing in L.A. called Kulox Woodshed, which is in the valley um, that every Monday night they would have um, like a, a song presentation thing. So I would go and do either a cover or an original and they would also film it for you if you paid 20 bucks. Um, so I would pay 20 bucks every time I would do it and just watch myself and see how could I improve? What am I doing cool that people react to and so on and so forth. And, you know, there was definitely hard times where, you know, I remember I, there was a, it was a coffee shop and there was just a microphone and I was standing behind and singing and somebody just walks up and literally turns around. And all I could think about was how am I going to get that person to turn back around? That's, that was my whole goal. And I was not really successful on that night, to be honest. And I took it as a lesson and like, okay, you know, there is going to be people that just really don't care, you know, and what can you do to make them care? So I started doing that. And then all of a sudden, you know, more and more writing got me into cooler rooms, into cooler venues to perform in. So I stopped doing open mics, started doing shows around in LA, like Whiskey A Go Go, um, The Mint, Peppermint Club, um, uh, my goodness, I did a show at the Roxy. It, like There was just like different things, Hotel Cafe. Um, and eventually it just got me to where I am now, just writing with cooler people, you know, performing on bigger stages, touring, you know, doing radio stuff. It all is a step-by-step -step thing that all started by just, by just taking a risk in being an idiot, you know, or like, doing something wrong or whatever, because you have to do things wrong in order to figure out what's right. Exactly. I'm, I'm the same way too, because when I started here at NC State, uh, I also decided to expand a little bit on actual like DJing on my computer. So like I did a couple of, uh, they, they, they call it shag nights where they play like shag music and then da line dance songs and uh, yeah. EDM songs. I'm over here, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to play around. And then I know exactly how you feel like when that one person turns around, how to make them turn back around. I'm over here like, I know if you play this, half the crowd's going to be like, yes, I love this song. The other half's going to be like, no, don't play that. So it's like, basically, you got to learn from it. What does the crowd like? And yep. also, what do you like to do? So it's it's definitely a learning experience when you're either doing DJ or something musical like that. So that is something that I think everyone needs to like, especially those that are heading into the music career need to know that, yes, there are going to be like lots of bad uh gigs or stuff that happens but take that as a learning experience exactly see what you can accomplish with with you know your your dealt your cards right see what you accomplish with that and you know if it ends up being the worst night well guess what that's going to be a story for the future you know when you have your best night you're gonna be like wow i remember when i was doing that and that happened you know i don't forget i really don't and so you know here i am now we're playing emos here tonight and what the crowd is, I think it's like 1500, 1600, which is like, I remember when I was performing for two people, you know, I don't forget about that. And I still play and perform the same way as if I were performing for two people, than if I'm doing 1500 or like 4,000 in Dallas tomorrow, or when we're in uh, South Carolina, um, it, it's not going to make a difference. You know, it, it, it's all a learning experience, everything. Yeah, that's basic. That's one thing, especially in today's world too. It's especially music. So it's just you just gotta like figure out what does the crowd want. At the same time, what do they also like? And then after that, you just take them to just like making them something big, rather if it's like a song or something. But yeah, that is definitely a big thing for music as well. So is there anything else you did besides like the uh or anything after high school besides the uh open mics that you did that also helped with your music career uh honestly just a lot of writing and releasing music it's that's just kind of the cycle is you play shows you write music you release it and people that listen to your songs come to your shows or the people that come to your shows listen to your songs um and it just kind of snowballs 
you know, the more you do it, the more people that listen, the more people that listen, the more people come to the shows, the more people come to the shows, more people, it's like a big circle. It, and so that, but um, I mean, I got really lucky too, because one of the first songs that I released ended up doing extremely well. Um, and so that also afforded me really cool opportunities to meet other people that put me in positions that I might not have been in for maybe a couple of years. So I got to jump ahead um, in certain things, but um, yeah, again, all that doesn't happen without you doing work. Exactly. That's works all about it. And I think your first, if I'm not mistaken, is overboard. Am I right? Yeah. That first release exactly. that mm -hmm. is really good. And I've been looking at is still one of your top songs when you search up yeah. your name on Apple music. And it's like, mm -hmm. usually like the first big releases of artists usually stay like, really popular yeah. yeah that was the same deal with the killers and mr brightside i think that was what yeah. they released and they're like still on the top so so my goal my goal is to break that that's my next goal is okay overboard did this and what else can we do you know that i think that's that's everyone's music goal too do you now it's like for future reference do you like still plan on doing any collaborations or are you just still just doing so the next song that i'm doing is actually a, a feature um, oh really or someone is being featured on the song i don't think i'm allowed to talk about it quite yet um but uh but yeah no we're i'm definitely very down for collabs i think you know cross promotion obviously works very well and on top of it i think she's very talented and a really good voice for the song so yeah it must be nice when you do collaborations and just uh featuring stuff because you actually meet other artists and you're like well, oh, I yeah. think this is you and that's also some stuff I like seeing, like when people do their behind the scenes on their uh, albums or stuff on YouTube, you get to see them and the other artists just like, not, I guess you could say off stage and just see like their true personality. And it's just really yeah. cool to get to see it. It's like, wow, I just can't believe I'm working with someone that sings one of my favorite songs. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's definitely like a very surreal moment. You know, I, I, I can't say that I get starstruck. But like, I almost have like, uh, like the, a couple of nights ago, um, I met Alec Benjamin, right? And, uh, you know, I think he's also a very fantastic songwriter. And so like that to me is like what captures and it's like, even just to pick his brain for a few minutes and be like, oh, what do you, you know, what would you, how do you do your songwriting? How do you do this? Just anything like I can learn from him. So that's, that's what's really fun. And then also like being in writing rooms with, these people who have written huge songs are just like, okay, I got to bring my A game. Um, Cause here we are in big leagues. Now it's not, it's not like me alone in my room or like me with someone else that's trying to like really truck it. You know, it's uh it's definitely a very like full circle feeling moment. However, it's also like, uh, I don't want to say intimidating, but it's like, it's like pressures on and now let's see how well you do, you know? So it's fun. It's really fun. I love it. Yeah, I figured that was the same thing too. Like you got like some artists, you're like, okay, this ain't just me anymore. We got to do something that also impresses uh, mm -hmm. the person that I'm that's featuring my song or the person. But that it's the I'm same covering. thing. But it's the same thing as what I was saying as far as the open mics, right? You know, I've been writing a long time, and so that practice, you know, even as confident as I can be, if you don't have the practice, then you know, being in those rooms, I would just kind of you know screw up and whatever. So you know, you learn the etiquette, you learn the collaboration process, you learn um, how you do your best work and so on and so forth. And then all of a sudden when you're in these rooms, it's like you talk to these people who, again, have like major things under their belt and they're coming to you and going, yeah, I really like what you're doing. Or like, this is perfect. I love this melody and everything. And all of a sudden you feel super validated because you're like, all right, I came up with something that someone who has 10 years experience doing this thinks is amazing, you know? Yeah, that's a lot. That's like, that's, I think that's like what every artist goes to. And still, the music that you made in the past, like, we continue making more and more, especially with other collabs and stuff. Like, do you ever just like wonder, like, okay, this song's done. What else can I write about? Like, what, what mood do I want the song to be? Like, how do you choose from that? I kind of, it kind of is just very momentary. I don't, like the only thing I walk into a session with most of the time is like an idea or a phrase or whatever. Um, or even just like you said, like sometimes it's a mood. Um, but I kind of just let it flow because 
I don't think songwriting should be like a, if you ever try to go to a session and say, I'm going to write a hit song today, you know, that's what I'm doing. Um, you'll never write a hit song because it doesn't work that way. Like the harder you work at it, the less, the less likely it's going to be easy to the ears. When something's easy to you and comes like this, it's going to come like this to someone else who's just listening to it for the first time. So um, I, I come in with an idea. I always come prepared. However, I'm always free form. I let things, I kind of see how the mood is, you know, um, if everybody's coming in to want to write a happy song and we're all happy, we're not going to try and write a sad song or a ballad. You know, if we're in the mood for a ballad, we're going to write a ballad. You know, it's, it, it, you really have to allow yourself to be free. I think that's a big thing with music too. And a lot of people there's like, I just don't know. A lot is just too free. And then they're just like, okay, maybe I'm just going to do like, oh, hey, I. Everyone has a different process. Everyone has a different process. And I, what I'm saying, it just works for me. You know, it doesn't necessarily work for every single one, you know. Everyone's different, especially right. when it comes to making music. Rather, if just literally something happens or they just literally just. I know some just literally just go on Google and just search up, okay, synonyms or something like that. I'm like, yeah. let's make a word about, uh, I don't know, a ball or something like that, you know. It's... Yeah. So now I'm, what is, I know a lot of people in music careers, their biggest goal is to like, you know, make it to the top charts. So if, when you ever do make the top charts and you think you feel like achieved that goal, what do you think like the purpose is after that? Like, do you still plan on continuing making music and, Still, like you said earlier, keep beating your top songs each mm -hmm. time. Or... I think, I mean, to answer the question really quickly, of course, it's to, you know, get as as on top as I can be. If I can play stadium shows, you know, that that's obviously a, a real physical attainable goal that I have for myself. Um, as far as making music, I don't think I could ever stop. And because, and that is because that my highest goal is to always write a song better than what I think is my best song. And I don't think I can ever achieve that is I think it's, it's always going to be like a repetitive thing. I'm going to say, oh, this is my best song, but can I do better? This is my best song. Can I do better? And it's always going to be yes, right? Even if the song has 5 billion plays, right? Whatever it is, it's a massive success. Great. Now what? Can you do better? Can you beat your own thing? That's That for me is my top goal. And so obviously, you know, again, if I can hit a, a number one records, I would fucking love that. Freaking love that. Yeah. Uh, you know, if I can hit, uh, you know, constant stadium tours and constantly travel around the world and get paid to, you know, play my music for 50,000, 100,000 people a night. Why wouldn't I want to do that? Of course, that's exactly where I'm headed towards. Um, but the ultimate goal is I want to be a part, a small part of the forward momentum of music that's really what my what my goal is i'm really focused on on how i can spread my takes and my message on different subjects so that people can feel like every aspect of their lives are are heard every aspect of their experiences have been felt by someone else because we are all you know, we're all human beings. We all go through different experiences. However, we feel the same base emotions. We all feel happiness. We all feel sadness, all within a different level, a different context. However, you know, the more we realize that we are all the same, um, the more interconnected we become. And that is my inspiration. And again, the goal to do this on a much level, a much larger level and a more continuous level, because I can't ever be done achieving it. I understand that. And I think that it's also really awesome to hear like a musician to say that like, okay, boom, that's the biggest song I could do better. And, you know, you see a lot of musicians that's been going on for years, like David Guetta. I mean, you see, yeah. listen to his songs. You're like, wow, I, it, he still makes pretty bangers. Oh yeah. Like, how many years he's been in uh, production. I have no idea, but like, still, he's still really good. And I think it's just like a talent that like, people like you who are very you know set to it that's gonna be their purpose for like they they really want to do that for as long as they 
literally physically can. If you take a look at anybody who's ever stayed around for longer than I would say five years, um, their goal was never to only get a number one song. Their goal wasn't only to play a stadium tour. It was there was always more. There was something more than that. That is is a higher concept, higher level than what you only want to achieve for yourself. It's what can you give the world. That's the beautiful thing about music is it's not only for yourself. It's not supposed to be for yourself. It's supposed to be for everyone. And the second you get that around your head, all of a sudden your whole perspective on writing, your whole perspective on playing shows is completely different because you're no longer doing it for yourself because your goal is to get a number one or play show. It's because your goal is for everyone. Exactly. That's See, that's, that's just the biggest thing I love about musicians i'm really glad you also made that point because that is actually really true and i wish that like all musicians can think that as well because usually it's not just i guess them it's also for their listeners too because that's like something you know they got a playlist of your songs there's something they listen to every single day you know yeah. think basically like if think about like your listeners i mean some if they're going through a bad day or something they'll listen to your or whoever's music just to cheer them up that's what artists should be like you know, not more about me, but more like what the fans want to hear that I can put into that makes me like, okay, I created a million, million percent. But yeah, that is awesome. And I think you really do also from listening to your songs, you do a really good job on that too. Cause Thank I've been, you, it's been, it's awesome. Trust me. You're already on my Apple music playlist right there Thanks, too. Man. I appreciate of you. Of course. And we appreciate you too. And I know we got more music coming your way here on Wolf Bites. We'll definitely play them as well so oh yeah i love that yeah we'll definitely continue sending you guys our lists and everything so please do anyway is there anything you'd like to add or tell anyone that's listening I know you're, you're, probably... heard. you're heard you're loved and you're not alone and i hope that i can give you a small part of confidence that that's true i think everyone needs to hear that today that is actually really true but anyway it's really awesome to have you i really do appreciate it and if thank you, you. Love- i appreciate you taking the time well thank you of course and if you love this podcast check out other podcasts wherever you get your podcast or at wolfbites.ncsu.edu it is dj flame and until next time <laughs>